My name is Nicolas Bobrinsky. This is my journey with the European Space Agency and the European Space Operations Center. ESA employs some of the world's leading scientists, engineers and experts. They are spread across different programs in Europe and around the world. Over the span of several decades, I have accompanied space safety and deep space communication on its journey from its beginning as a small seed, through the innovation it produced to becoming one of ESA's fastest growing programs. In this video series, I am sharing stories and memories and some lessons I have learned along the way in my 35-year career in space. I hope that you watching will be inspired to become part of the next generation of the European space industry and you will go forward with curiosity, passion and confidence. So I started uh, my work in, in ESA as a ground stations engineer and uh, this was very much focused on space communication. The purpose of all this was to establish a, a good and reliable communication between the, the stations and the, and the spacecraft to do also uh, ranging, which means uh, distance measurements, Doppler effects. Uh, this, uh, this was very challenging, of course. The technologies are, are there and it was a combination of uh, theoretical know-how, which is uh, quite quite deep. I had a specialization in space communication in my engineering school, uh, but also a lot of practical and operational experience. And uh, uh, all this needs to be put together in order to acquire the, a certain technical excellence, because theoretical knowledge only is not sufficient. You need also to be uh, substantiated by uh, practical expertise, operational expertise, to have a real understanding of all this. And uh, the technology is evolving very, very fast. And uh, what you have acquired at a certain point in time, you need to refresh it all the time because it's uh, changing very quickly. And uh, what you have acquired in a certain year, five years later, has changed completely. So the effort is permanent to, equi to keep the technical excellence at the right level. When I joined the agency at the end of the 80s, I was very lucky to uh, join the agency at the time of uh, rapid expansion of the ESA tracking stations, the S-Track. And uh, the expansion was not only in the number of stations, but also in the technologies which were employed for these, uh, inside these stations. So we were migrating from a relatively old technology based on the VHF communication to uh, S-band and X-band communications. And this implied a lot of new equipment and not a lot of new technologies requiring uh, knowledge about this. Uh, and practical expertise, and these need to be tested and validated uh, inside the tests, uh, inside the stations, and then put uh, in operation and uh, finally validated with the, the missions which were then using these uh, stations with the new technologies. When I joined ESOC in uh, October 1987, I was just uh, finishing my military service in Ivory Coast in West Africa. and. Uh, I, I came in and a few days later my, my boss came to me and said, ah, you are coming uh, from Africa, what about uh, taking a mission also to Africa in, uh, in the Malindi station, which is in East Africa, this time in Kenya, and we need uh, uh, engineers there to support an upcoming uh, launch of a ISRO rocket. ISRO is the Indian Space Research Organization and uh, we had at this time a cooperation between ESA and India. And uh, ESA was supporting the launch uh, of an Indian uh, Earth observation satellite. And, uh, and there we went with colleagues to this Malindi station for a few weeks and uh, had to prepare the station for all this uh, uh, nice la launch, which was uh, launched from a platform station, oil platform station, um, close to the coast of Kenya, 20 kilometers away. And uh, it was a scout rocket, actually. And uh, there is a little anecdote about this uh, this launch where where the during the countdown everything was ready the launch the launcher was on the on the launch pad and then uh, when the, the lift off should have happened the rocket didn't go and uh, the director of the launch uh, was so uh, upset that he banged on the table with his fist and uh, somehow there was a bad contact in this uh, console the contact was re-established and the rocket lifted off. 
So this was uh, followed uh, 90 minutes later by a very nice acquisition of this uh, Indian satellite by the Malinzi station and uh, all this worked perfectly in the following weeks. When you start in ESA as a young engineer, uh, you are often uh, equipped with very nice diplomas. You, you have a good engineering degree from a good university or a PhD. And um, sometimes you think that you will be doing theoretical studies acquiring the knowledge, but uh, what is extremely important is, in addition to these theoretical studies, which you may be tasked with at the beginning, that you uh, also experience practical uh, topics, that you do not hesitate to participate to test validation campaigns. It's important also that you uh, get the feeling in ESOC of what operations means. So this means you would sit yourself at the console. It's very important work as well. It's really the place where you get a fantastic operational expertise and this is invaluable for the for the future it's a it's a job where you learn most of the of the topics which you will then later will put in practice in all your activities being them theoretical being them study related being them uh, managerial this is extremely valuable experience to uh, participate to the life cycle of a real satellite mission technical expertise uh, is not acquired forever. It needs to be to be chased permanently. You need to permanently improve your theoretical know-how, your practical expertise, your your operation skills, and uh, all this is related to to the field which you have chosen, yeah, in which you are developing your technical expertise. And uh, there is a lot of fun also because you you do not do this alone. You do it in the teams. You exchange information. You progress permanently. And I can really encourage you uh, to go in this direction and uh, acquire permanently this technical expertise. Improve it all the time. Uh, one day, uh, during a, a mission preparation support at uh, at the Kourou station, and uh, the day before the the launch event was uh, was happening, all everything was ready at the station. The telemetry part the uplink part, the ranging, everything was functioning and uh, all the team went uh, back to the hotel to have a bit of rest to be prepared for the launch which would occur on the, on the following day. And suddenly, very early in the morning, we were called uh, by the station personnel saying that uh, the amplifier would not work anymore. And the amplifier which does not work means that you do not have any more the commanding capability to the, to the satellite. And uh, we had to fix it. So we went to the to the station, and we tried to understand what was the cause of this uh, of this failure. And uh, uh, the amplifier, in effect, uh, following a heavy rain during the night, uh, had, uh, has received a visitor. And this visitor was a large lizard who went into the amplifier and got electrocuted inside the amplifier, which has a very high voltage. And following this, we could uh, repair the amplifier and put the station back and and launch. But we needed to uh, produce a very important uh, report, which was a failure report. And uh, as a proof of, uh, of uh, effect of the failure, we have put uh, the lizard on the copy machine, faxed it, and explained that this was the, the culprit and the reason for the failure. And uh, with this, I think the station was repaired again and we could launch quietly and successfully. Several uh, people have uh, been really instrumental and uh, have helped me uh, uh, a lot in the, in developing the technical expertise and maybe later also the the political sense for for what uh, can be done and how the things could uh, uh, could be successfully done and concerning the technical expertise and operational expertise uh, uh, I would like to give uh, credit to, uh, to to Mick Barrett who was my first boss and uh, who was at this time the, the head of the section in which I have started for the for the stations and also who was a very often operations manager for, for many uh, ESA missions. And he had a very acute sense of uh, operational readiness, of technical excellence. And uh, on top of this, his uh, English as a, as a British person was absolutely excellent. And it was always uh, very reassuring when you were at the other side of the world to hear his voice uh, encouraging you in your activities and, uh, and uh, interacting with you in, always in a very positive manner. And uh, concerning um, maybe the part of, uh, of, of SSA, we were starting the program and not only the, the technical expertise and the technical results were important, but also the, the necessity to bring them to the governing bodies of, of ESA, to the council, uh, to some program boards, 
but also to the ministries, to the ministries of our ESA member states who were eventually making the decision to, to fund and support the program or not. And uh, here uh, there was an excellent expertise available with, uh, with Gale Winters, who, who was uh, instrumental in um, starting the SSA program as a preparatory program, uh, helping uh, convincing uh, the decision makers uh, of visa member states in the ministries and also uh, starting the, the right steps at the council in particular to make sure that the program would uh, go ahead and would be supported at the ministerial council. And uh, I want really give uh, credit to his uh, uh, sense of, uh, of politics and what needs to be done to, to convince the delegates for the successful start of the program, which, which happened indeed. I really would like to encourage you to, uh, to mentor, uh, when you have this possibility, younger colleagues. Uh, this is part of the, of the exchange of information, transfer of information, uh, which you have acquired yourself and which needs to be transmitted to the younger people who are starting, who often are starting with a, a very good theoretical knowledge about uh, uh, space communication or flight dynamics or mission control systems, but which need to be uh, also mentored and helped um, to develop their skills in the, the specific uh, environment of, of ESA. And this is something which you don't learn in the university. We need really, uh, you need really to be working in ESOC to acquire this uh, practical experience in the operational environment in which we operate here at ESOC.